connecting. There Great. we are. Great. We're live. <laughs> so I've told everyone we have awesome emerging talent, um, Kahari Turner today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you. And I'm Brooke Jaffe. For those of you just joining, I'm contributing editor here at Penske Media. So I want to dive right in and just let's let's talk about you, Kahari. Website that I love so much, um, where you say, "I've or, well, I, it's the words of Rudy Francisco, where you say, I've been trying to convince my shadow that I'm someone worth following. Yeah. So we, we certainly, uh, we certainly think you are worth following over here at Art News. Have you convinced yourself? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, that's, that's, oh, I'm, I'm still I working on it. I think that I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> No. So for the, there is a lot of people who are joining today who may be familiar with your work, and I'm sure there are several who are new to your work. Um, and your primary medium seems to be paint. Um, and you state on your website that your art is constantly evolving and transforming, um, and that you're still in the process of discovering really how you are going to ultimately express yourself. Maybe just talk to us a little bit about that journey for you, that artistic process, and where you see your work right now in that process. Yeah, so as far as it goes, and that idea, I think about the work in, I have so many variations of the way that I'm working, um, which is great for me because I get to, you know, pick and choose which variations I'm working with now. So I think that the way that everything grows is dependent on how I kind of navigate all the different forms of art making I've been working on. Uh, lately, it's been portraitures, but then there's also a set of series of work that I do that's full body figures. There's sometimes mm. where it's just the nose and the lips and then maybe the hands, or sometimes it's one thing that maybe contributed to black, uh, black culture in certain type of ways. So like the piece behind me is just the nose and the lips, but also the do-rag in that yeah. instance. So it's like, I'm figuring out which one of these things I kind of want to pull from. Usually, I think that I'm really interested in trying to figure out all of them in different various forms. I feel like the work has been kind of growing in a way where I see everything as like a part of the conversation, but it doesn't necessarily have to be specific to one particular part of the conversation. So what I've been doing now is really just trying to connect them all uh, in a way that they physically kind of resemble each other, but also have their own individual meanings for maybe like a set of work that I do versus another set of work. So like thinking about them in series now makes me think about how these works build on top of each other series. But yeah, I'm really just trying to figure out exactly what, what way do I want to keep going? Because I think that I got something really good right now with the uh, adding water from different locations into the work and making it a part of the work. So like using ocean water. So in this last piece, I use ocean water um, and in a way of trying to conceptually talk about masculinity and blackness and like strength, but also like vulnerability and, and beauty, but also, you know, like these dangers that the ocean can bring, but in a way that it's not anything other than how grand the ocean is like, so yeah, so like now I just came back from Milwaukee and I bought and I brought uh, water from the Milwaukee River with me because I'm setting up for another show that's going to happen in October and uh, also water from Lake Michigan. So that is now going to enter the work in a couple of pieces as well. So that's really interesting. It was something I was going to ask you later, but let's go there because something you're very transparent about when you watch interviews with you or things you've done when you were doing your artist and residency. Um, program this summer in Venice was your use of materials. You show, you like to show your fans and your community the exact color palette you use, which is really unprecedented, I think, for an artist to be so transparent with their materials. And then I think expand for people who might not be as familiar with your work. What do you mean by use water in your works? Um, and are you mixing that into the paint? What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so uh, this piece behind me is actually perfect for this. So in all of my work, I usually will start off with like an acrylic base, 
and then I'll do some type of oil on top. So this is oil, this is oil, and then the features of the do-rag are all in oil. Everything else, so this is on watercolor paper. So this is a mix of acrylic and watercolor on here. And the way that I did that is I'll lay out a wash using ocean water, and then I'll do dabs of paint kind of throughout this piece. And so in something like this, I use the ocean water as specifically kind of like a layer that I then add on the paint to. But in other sections, I'll do it where I'll mix the waters in with the paint and thin out the paint to get some type of type of look that I'm going for. And then I'll go straight and using the ocean water mixed paint to then paint onto the substrate. Uh, and it kind of keeps going back and forth. So sometimes I'll do it where I'll just put like a, a pool of water onto a canvas while I lay it down on the ground and then, you know, add some type of pigment to it and then put it up after it's dry or kind of let the sun dry it out and then kind of work with whatever comes from that. Or I'll just mix it up and go straight from the paint onto the canvas and kind of back and forth. So I'm like moving a lot when I'm working, but I'm also mm -hmm. trying to use nature in a way that nature kind of has an effect on the work without me thinking too hard on like, what does this need to look like, you know? Yeah, I think what's really interesting about what you're saying is that in addition to it enhancing or helping the actual technique or thin the paint or whatever, it's also, there's the symbolism of the places you're getting the water from yeah. and how that's informing your art. And yeah. I think that that's, that's really interesting. Um, I wanna just talk about the piece you just showed us um, because it dives into some of the work I think you, you've gotten a lot of attention for where you're using really bold um, facial features um, that you describe um, on, your, on your own website as sort of a portal to create the connection to blackness. Yeah. Um, and that you want to show imagery or um, that doesn't necessarily show what you call the pain that people have gone through or go through and that this is the duality of your work. These are your words. I'm, I'm parroting them back to you, but they're so beautiful. And you say the noses, the lips, and the skin represented by my history, my connection to my heritage. Um, so can you talk about um, how you sort of honed in on this concept of, you know, the, the facial features that you describe um, and then mixed with these kind of abstract gestures sometimes, kind of what, how did you kind of arrive at this look? Yeah, that's that's like the funniest part because it's it's one of those things where it's a happenstance. Like I did a lot of research prior to, and so in this way, what I was doing in the early of 2019 was working on social justice reform in the painting. So I like would draw a work of protests and draw and make paintings of, you know, uh, things that were happening around me and you know the situations that were occurring is you know the the Freddie Gray situation the Michael Brown situation all of those things I was making art about and I was really interested in how uh, social justice and justice reform in a general was not like something that I saw a lot of art about so in that way I wanted to create art about that and so in, in my studies of just like trying to understand what was going on I found a study I believe it was the Los Angeles Times that put out where it would said that people with wider noses, thicker lips, and darker skin getting longer prison sentences, which is such mm. a crazy statistic to look at because it's like that makes obvious sense because of the role that people have played in this justice system and who is getting locked up for longer and what that means to those people. But mm -hmm. to think of it as just those two features, which are very... I guess traditionally Afrocentric with the wider nose and the thicker lips. Um, and to be like proud of those features, but to also know that behind those features can be such a tragic thing that is, you know, played in America is one of those aspects that I really wanted to play off of. Um, so in that work, I talked about it in a way that it was specific to social justice. And so I used a lot of orange to talk about jumpsuits and, and metal to talk about uh, like bars and whatnot. But I figured that none of that was doing what I wanted it to do. It wasn't like a impactful as much as I needed it to be. Mm -hmm. So I translated that into action. So right now, or past tense, just this February, we put on a show. No, just this 
April, we put on a show of people who have been incarcerated artwork in a digital exhibition. And so uh, that I translated all of that energy from the paintings into actual work that I feel like is helping more. So uh, we tried to do a live show, but obviously with COVID that, that didn't yeah. happen. But uh, what I've been doing is trying to work with people at Rikers. Um, and as soon as like everything clears up for that, hopefully I can get back to that. Um, but wow. putting on shows for people who have been incarcerated and like getting their artwork out there has been the, the translation to me taking that specific part of the work out of the work and trying to make it into some type of action where now the work is all about celebration and trying to talk about that past while also then creating this new bright future um, that I'm hoping can come through in the work. So like you see the work and you understand that there's a history behind the work, but you're also looking at the work as inspiration to see, you know, what what's the new thing. And so where it all came from is like that transition from social justice to then taking it and now making this a celebration while I do all of the social justice aspects of the work outside of the work and then try to, you know, advocate for those people in different ways. Love it. It's unbelievable. Um, Thank you. So let's talk about in, in the spirit of activism and the spirit of change. Going forward, we're obviously living through a pandemic. We, yeah. you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, and we've got an impending election that's incredibly important. Right. How is this impacting your work going forward, or isn't it? Um, do you, is there a way you're sort of capturing the essence of what's happening right now in the work? Um, that's interesting, because at the end of the day, I feel like, I've been talking about it, so it's really been helpful in getting the artwork out there because the things that everybody's talking about now, I was talking about early 2019, and people have been talking about since, you know, a while, of Trayvon Martin. So everybody, so there's been people who've been doing this work since Trayvon Martin, and, and prior to that as well, but like Trayvon Martin was the the turning point for a lot of people, so in that case, Ever since then, the, a lot of this work has already been coming out of me, but people are now really starting to pick up on the people who, like me or others that are, you know, really out there being in the streets that are working uh, and seeing all these different things and noticing like, oh, we can help support these people. This has been happening or this is continuing to happen. And now it's like one of those things where everybody has eyes on these type of people, which is great mm -hmm. because the work that I'm doing, I feel like can help a lot, but it also can help, you know, specifically the generational aspects of trauma that black people receive because of not kind of seeing themselves in the way that, mm -hmm. you know, other people may see themselves uh, specifically, you know, through media and how, uh, the portrayal of black people is really, you know, linear in a way. So it's only maybe like four or five different aspects of our blackness that are seen. So me trying to now like destroy that and make it so many different versions because without the eyes, nobody has a way to connect specifically with the person or people that I make work about. And I wanted it to be that so that people could enter into the work and see themselves in it or see somebody they know in it, or see multiple people that they know in it. And people have told me that they can they can think of other people that potentially could be the person that I'm thinking of, yeah. or making art about. And that's really the purpose, is to make it so like you see yourself, and if you don't see yourself, you see somebody that you know in a way that's different than what you've been looking, or have been exposed to. So that's like really wow. big on how I'm thinking about it right now. Wow, that's incredible. Um, okay, so we've talked a little bit. I'm going to switch gears just slightly oh, go ahead. and go back to your, your roots. Um, oh, yeah. You are from Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and I think you were just there. So actually, we sort of covered a little bit of this about water becoming a bigger sort of um, influence in your work. Um, actually, it's really funny because you get, did give me a little sneak preview of how you've been carrying the the water back can you do you have that handy yeah I got right. because i just so, love this little behind the scenes of so artists got, at work i put it in large large jugs i also have uh like i've had a smart water bottle i was like okay put it in smart water uh, i'm not sure that's how everyone would imagine venice 
<laughs> so funny. yeah, I just been like, if I had something around to carry it, <laughs> I've been putting it in. And yeah, this was like, I was in a boat uh, in the middle of the Milwaukee River, and I just was like, okay, I'm in this boat, so I just put my hand out <laughs> on the side and just let water get in, which is great because it looks clear until you really <laughs> look at the water and you're like, that's not clean. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, that's that's the point. Like using tap water is great, and it you know I know what it does, but using water that's not sourced through a faucet has been really interesting because the type of textures that I'm getting from just using ocean water alone has been insane. Something that I wasn't thinking about, I thought about it like metaphorically, like oh this conceptually makes sense, but then to actually yeah. physically have a change to the work because of the type of water I make or the type of water I'm using. Uh, has been great. So I've just been like, I know for a fact that it can, it works conceptually, but to physically change the work in a way that's different has been great because I, I, I wasn't expecting it and I love it so far. So, no, it's, it's but, just great. It was a fun little sneak peek and it, it's just, sometimes it's fun to see how things are really being done. You might not be thinking that way. <laughs> so I just wanted to quickly touch on something that I, that I read about you, which is that you were a cheerleader at yeah. one point in your past. And, you know, on the one hand, cheerleading and being an artist don't seem to go hand in hand. But then when you think about, first of all, your positivity, your discipline, and, you know, the hard work that goes into being a cheerleader and sort of attitude and, and showmanship, um, I guess, how do you see your current role as an artist and sort of your past as a cheerleader connecting um and how did being a cheerleader sort of prepare you or Im affect your practice if it did at all i'm just i just think it's an interesting fact you wouldn't always read about a, an artist yeah no it's great it's it's the weirdest thing because i also was a mascot too so being a cheerleader <laughs> and a mascot kind of present these like weird factors into the work that i don't <laughs> think about all the time but people bring up because um, thinking about this work is, you know, if I was to be a mascot, you can't see my face. I'm like somebody that's completely different in the way that I'm perceived. And I kind of act out how I per people perceive me, but it's not the same person as me. However, that does mix together. So like being a mascot in the way that this work portrays is a weird kind of thought process that some people will, will see that I kind of See, sometimes, but not every time, but it's one of those things where, uh, you know, being someone that you're actually not to portray something that you actually aren't is uh, one of those things. So, like, in, in Tennessee, I was a governor. I was a, uh, I don't know, I was, well, was a white man with a big white mustache and a top hat. And so, like, the, the role... <laughs> was made for me to play like a, a victory, like a, like a great <laughs> governor. So like I would grab my suit jacket or put my hand inside my suit and I had a blazer and like shoes and, a, and I would always touch my top hat and I would carry a cane sometimes. Um, but to then play that person uh, is, is interesting. And there's so much stuff about that role because th that person was also had like an illegitimate black child and had like slaves so like there's a there's a lot of layers wow to this. <laughs> oh, wow. Of that, i don't know how i'm gonna make work about that but one day i have to because it's such a big part i was that person for four years so it's like wow anyway but yeah so i i worked for the nba in milwaukee so i i saw how that mask I handled, Bango was the person. Uh, I was, And then for cheerleading, that also was just like motivation. So really, all it comes down to is my work ethic. Uh, for sure, my coaches at Austin P, uh, Shandy and Maurice did, you know, put instilled in me that uh, you always work hard and you're not working hard if the person that's working harder than you isn't sleeping. So like, the idea is a little rough because it's like it's like a lot, but oh the idea is that you should keep working regardless because there's somebody who could be working harder than you. And I feel like mm. what I've been trying to do is definitely work as hard as I can, but only to really push what comes out of this at the end of the right. day. Like I feel like the strides I've made in the work from early September to now have been, I feel like astronomical for me 
only because I keep trying to get to a point where I have no other options but to evolve the work um, mm -hmm. because I've expended all the versions of the work that I could possibly do until I get to a point where I was like, okay, well, this needs something new. And so it's been really good because the last past months, I've been working nonstop to make a piece almost every every day or every other day. So within the last two months, I mean, maybe like 40 some odd pieces. But then those 40 end up being, you know, the things that push the next 40 uh, or whatnot. So it's been really good. So I love that answer. Um, I, the mascot story is epic. And I agree. If I can humbly just say needs to be explored, but um, I want to talk about your work ethic and how, because you are an artist and art, artistry is a creative process and sometimes you can't force that, but you just recently finished um, a residency, an artist in residency program in Venice, California with um, the Iris project. Uh, yeah. Iris project. So I wanted to tap a little bit. Is that part of why you were sort of in a situation where you needed to produce a certain quantity? Was that the expectation of the program? Or did you just feel, I mean, is it the quarantine? Like, was that self-motivated? Was it a combination of your own inner drive and the constructs of the program? And also just also you are an MFA student currently um, at Columbia. So you are in school still. And I, so I want to hear how much of this is homework? How much of this is self-discipline? Uh, that's great. All of it's self-discipline. Honestly, everybody has this, has this kind of mindset in, in Columbia and in the residency of you do whatever you want to do. We're here to support. And then whatever right. that happens, happens. So like when I first went to the residency, the first day, uh, Sam, who was in charge of the residency, was like, if you want to just hang out at the beach for a month, that's fine. Like, giving you space to work is really the option. But, like, if you make something, then we'll work on you, work with you to, you know, talk about what you make. If you want studio visits, we can set up studio visits. Uh, mm -hmm. And in my head, I, I know for a fact when I first got to Columbia that I have two years. I have, that's it. I don't have any other time. If I try to do any other grad program, outside of this, it's going to be like something completely different. So I know for a fact, if I, ha if I have one MFA that I can do and I only have two years to do it, then how am I going to maximize my time uh, with the materials that I got, with the resources that I got, with the people that I know I have to contact right away? Uh, what can I do? And it was the same thing with the residency. I've been working in my apartment like this is my room, but this is also my studio since March when they closed down everything. So in my head, when I went to California, I knew I have 30 days. If I have 30 days, what can I get in 30 days? What can I do in 30 days? And those 30 days were insane. But through that, everything changed because of kind of my work ethic. I feel like everything is continues to keep coming towards me as long mm -hmm. as I know that I keep doing something that I've been wanting to do ever since I was little. And so uh, I think that, you know, working has been the driving factor for me to keep working because I haven't asked for anything. Things keep coming towards me, but I think it's because I'm really ambitious about the work as just a whole. And so people have been gravitating towards the work, but I'm really just excited about people at least giving me opportunities to show what I can do. Because then if you give me an opportunity, I'm going to try to take it full force uh, and show what, what I got. For Hearing that you are so self-motivated and I, I really admire, admire it so, so much. Any advice for people sort of young and, and kind of growing in their journey? I mean, do you recommend a formal education and MFA program for young artists who are trying to hone their craft? Yeah, I think that MFAs, and I, I always like to answer these things on Twitter because there's a lot of like younger <laughs> people who follow me on that. So I like always give out advice about whatever I can possibly get because uh, MFA programs are great, but they are also a, a privilege in all types of ways. And I understand what kind of privileges I have for even being in this program. And I feel like that's 
that's why I like share so much is because I know that there's people who are like me or who grew up in the same circumstances like me that might not have the same privileges. So I try to like open up as much as I can because if you're willing to take it, uh, so many things can open up for people. So it's like mm -hmm. one of those things where I think my biggest advice for people who are younger than me or at least like who are, you know, trying to move up in some type of way is to find out what resources they have. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who don't know any of the resources they have. And that's the problem mm -hmm. because maybe within the last two years, I really started figuring out like what type of programs were out there for artists, what type of residencies were out there, what can I get away with in a way that's, you know, is free for me or low cost for me that will give me the most benefit. Um, and it's a lot of things too, where it's like, if you're in a smaller city, like me being in Clarksville, Tennessee, which is like, you know, this big mm -hmm. <laughs> in comparison to New York, is one of those things where it's also a situation where I really, really had to deep dive with my teachers at that time and at that location to, you know, understand what's a possibility because I'm older now, I'm like, I'm 29 now, but I went into undergrad at 24. And wow. the immediate first thing I asked was uh, my freshman or my sophomore year was, how do I get into grad school? And it wasn't a thing where they didn't, they didn't try to tell me otherwise, but it wasn't something that they were like, oh, I didn't, like a lot of BFA students or even undergrad students aren't thinking about right. uh, what MFA the... programs right away. So it's right. like for me to, you know, go out and be like, well, how do I do this? They were like, well, this is how you do this. And they told me everything that I pretty much needed to know and what I needed to work for. So those last three years of grad or undergrad worked on my works done, getting all this done. But it was because I asked and because I had to find those resources out. And so, you know, who, who do I get uh, letters of recommendation from? Like I had to figure all of that out. And if I was to try to do that, maybe my senior year or something, then I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't be here. So I tell people all the time, like, find out what resources are available. Who knows what, and how do you, you know, move from there? I think it's incredible because I think there's so many people that just can't figure out where to even begin, and it's all about yeah. having the confidence to ask the questions and try to leverage those resources that are around you. Um, I'm curious during quarantine. So first of all, you are, you just said that during the quarantine, you've turned your apartment in New York City into your workspace. Will you give us maybe just like a quick little spin so we can see, uh, can you show us any of it beyond oh, yeah. that wall behind you? A tour. Just a little, a little behind the scenes is always fun. <laughs> so uh, this is my room. So I have all these plants. I basically put up a uh, cloth to cover my walls on one side of my room and then I'll work on something over there. And then I'll basically put a cloth up on the other side of my room. It's like my desk. It's like canvas, 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 um, and rolls of paper and, and all types of other stuff. And then what I also did was, I have like really great roommates because they let me take up space in this <laughs> apartment because I have no more space to take up. So then what we have is we have this like small living room section and this is like Columbia student housing. So uh, Oops. into this small room and let me just show you what you're breaking up just like. a little bit, but all right, there you are again. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. I can hear you. Um, it's so a little yeah, this spottier, is the but... other small room. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so then I'll basically put all of my work on paper, on like a a board and then stretch it. Are your roommates also artists or are they studying something else? No, nah, they're studying something else. So <laughs> <laughs> So it's great. Well, they must really like you. <laughs> Thank you for that little sneak peek. We're going to wrap up uh, would I not that you've had time because you seem quite busy anything else outside of your art that's been creative that you've been trying in the quarantine I mean it seems like you've got your hands full there but cooking <laughs> we know that you're taking water from large water bodies <laughs> yeah no I think that uh right now 
everything is centered around art. So it's really yeah. great because I don't feel like I'm like working really hard. I'm just doing what I'm like supposed to do, I guess in a way. Great. Uh, so like I'll take trips, but those trips also then include me doing something for art. So like me going to Wisconsin, I really only needed to go for a meeting and to check out the space for uh, my solo show that's happening in October. And so I was just going there to check out the space, but also my family lives there. So I stayed for four, five days, uh, went on boats, hung out. My girlfriend came. Um, so we spent time together, but also like I collected water. So, you know, I'm really just trying to make it so that I live with the art that I'm making. So it's been yes. really good. So everything is really just, yeah, I don't think I'm ever getting to a point where I, I take anything away from it, though. So it's been good. Yeah. It's fantastic. We're very excited for you. Um, I would just say, I want to know what's next for you professionally. I see some, I just want to say, I'm noticing in the backdrop, and I, you said it's what you're currently working on, a lot of blue tones. Um, but anything next, besides, it's, you just mentioned a solo show in October that you'd like to just tell the art news community before we say goodbye for now. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I kind of, I kind of went crazy. Because I, I don't say no to things yet. Um, I maybe <laughs> so, so if I'm gonna be completely honest, I have six or seven different shows that I'm gonna be in before January. <laughs> wow. So so I got a solo coming up in October in Wisconsin. I have a group show that I'm going to be a part of here in New York in October as well. Um, there should be a group show that I'm a couple pieces in in September. Uh, I have a duo show with me and my girlfriend happening in Nashville in December. And then I'll have another solo show in Venice, California at the same residency program that I was at right. in January. Um, and then that's it. I might have one or two other things, but I don't remember what they are. They're probably like group stuff. The only ones that I'm really worried about, and I'm really worried about, but the, the things I'm making uh, work for now is the solo show in October. All the group shows I already have to work, and those are already put off to the side, so I just put those in. But yeah, so the solo show in, in October in Milwaukee, um, and then the duo show with me and my girlfriend, Ashante Kendall, uh, in Nashville in December, and then the solo show in January in Venice, California is the two, the three big, big, big next things. And then after that, I'm pretty much, I don't have anything. So, so well, like, I was like, I just stacked it on at the end because I was, everybody's like coming out of quarantine or at least like slowly sprinkling back in. So, you know, people were like, hey, we don't have any spots. Like, would you want to show? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, I've just been stacking up, but uh, after January, I don't know. I'm gonna see what happens. Probably. Well, don't for, don't ready. forget us. And um, Kahari, I just have to say, um, where can everyone who is being introduced to you and now want, can't get enough and wants to know more about you, where can everybody find you? Oh, for sure, find me on my Instagram, uh, Kahari Daim. So it's K H A R I dot r-a-h-e-e-m i go by kahari turner but my middle name is raheem um it's spelled two different ways but <laughs> don't worry about that if you just call me kahari turner that should be perfectly fine uh, i definitely <laughs> love that so um yeah that and if you go to my instagram it pretty much has everything so my website will be linked to my instagram uh, if you're looking for my uh website it's www.kaharirahim Kari Rahim, so it's R A H I M for that one dot com, um, which I'll probably change soon. So it'll be Kari Turner all over the place. Uh, all right, but you're yeah. so good at yeah, you're great at updating your Instagram. So any information you need, you can find there. You are an absolute delight. You are definitely Thank a bright star, somebody to watch, and we're just so thrilled to get you here nice and early. And good luck with all of the the work. And um, thank you so much. Thank and you. we will hopefully That's talk great. to you soon. Oh, yeah. Enjoy the rest of the summer and stay safe. You too. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.